Okay, nice. Back to two naked Asians with Ayoto and two naked Asians. Ayoto and Junjin. <laughs> we should work on a better introduction setup. Got myself beer. I had a.、Uh, I usually go to the same burger place every day because I'm just lazy,、mm-hmm. and they、okay. start giving me free coffee, but only if I sit and take my sweet time. They like come on, here's a free coffee now, fuck off. But today I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do the thing, and I order a coffee, and then they always have to give me a free coffee. But instead of giving me the free coffee, they give me a double coffee. So I still pay for the coffee,、oh. and they put another coffee on top. But the thing is, I don't want. More coffee. I want just one coffee, <laughs> and I know the thing. But so now I'm really pumped up, and my stomach feels weird because I <laughs> too much of a good thing. But yeah, really looking yeah. happy that we got the situation here. But you are in a. I'm here. I'm here to celebrate your successful screening of、um, your film. A film with An- Andre, but you you have to be quiet because you you're in the new tatami room, living with gangsters and yakuza's living next door. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If if I'm too loud, they will come and cut my finger. <laughs> so before before we usually stream in, I don't see the room. One and a half tatami room. Where were you streaming before? I was in my grandpa's old room. He died, and now his library full of Buddhist scriptures. Yeah. And we're talking about square. Yeah. yeah. Now we have the next one. Bro- now I'm in this like a little three tatami room in Osaka. It, it's only ten bucks. <laughs> With angry yakuza's <laughs> next door, so we never seem to find the <laughs> ideal streaming situation. Yeah. I I can hear them fart. Is it? <laughs> so I'm sure like they're like already like、uh, this guy who just came today is like speaking on his phone so annoying and if if he if he dares to laugh or like shout I'm gonna fucking break the wall and fucking cut his finger off. That's the that's the situation. I think it'll be amazing if we can invite the yakuza's to also. Come and do a film analysis on my film with Andre to have it. You see this? It, it, it's like a cage, you know. It's like, like I can't get outside. <laughs> so after a, a very long hiatus, drinking my yeah yeah from two naked Asians, we're back. Yes, we're back. We're back. Junshin has finally decided on a laptop that was driving both of us、yeah. nuts. We're not gonna talk about it because I don't want to give them a free advertisement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been、um, difficult process to find it. It's been difficult. I was never. It took me so long to be emotionally ready to do this. I had this、mm, from 2008, and、uh, I had so much attachment to it. You know, I loved my old computer, but fucking like. It took. It, it started to take so much time just to send out emails, you know. <laughs> and and that's because all these like pop-up ads. I think that's that's like really taking up a lot of space. And my RAM was only like four gigabyte total RAM, right? The memory. Yeah. It's amazing you had four gigabytes from eight years ago. That seems a lot. That's a lot, right? Yeah. It, it was the pro. <laughs> I'm not gonna say which brand because I fucking hate that brand. You know, like a fucking. Because all I wanted, all I need to do is to send out emails and open maybe. No, I don't even check my Facebook anymore. Just send out emails, and you use like、um, edit some like texts and all. But they don't let me do that anymore. It's like, oh, your computer is outdated. Yeah, it's outdated, but it should be good enough to send out fucking emails.、Yeah. Yeah, forever we have to forever upgrade and forever improvement, and you have to be on this continuous treadmill. So I don't want to improve. I don't want to improve. Yeah, and that that's kind of you know trying to pop my film here. That's kind of also the、mm-hmm. a bit of the thing that I was doing with my film that I could make a film with 
um, the best camera and the best thing and have all these things. And in the end, it, it, it gave me more pain and, and also mm. alienation from the subjects. And so I made this film, my film with Andre, with uh, mostly just shot on my phone. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, there's the scenes where I have a shot uh, of me in the house. That's with my camera, which is not a good camera either, but good enough. It's a, it's a just, it's a video camera. I put on a tripod. It looked so good. Thanks. Yeah. Well, let's not get too excited about the company phone uh, and the quality, but yeah. I mean, I have it on a gimbal. And I'm just there. We are so like powerless here. We're like so angry and like we talk so much shit about it. But then, <laughs> then we go to their store and buy their products. Yeah. And we were like using their products and we were like, oh, I hate this company. <laughs> this company is taking over. So what do you think? What do you think now? How was your experience watching the film? <sighs> I mean, I don't know what to talk about. I, <laughs> I thought about a lot. I thought about a lot of things. You know, in the beginning, I started watching and it felt like the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, so this is, this doesn't feel like a documentary was the first thought I had. Cause you start, you, you started telling a story, you know, and I've, I've seen documentaries like that, but it, it's not, you're not just an observer, you're a storyteller. And these people you choose to, uh, capture in this film, they, they're, they're the characters you, you, you picked, you know, that's the, okay, I can be totally off here, but these are the thoughts. I had the same feeling when I was referring, self-referring to it, that I would refer to these characters and, mm -hmm. and I, I would catch myself and think like, they're not just character people. And, and do I have control over them? Do I not? I mean, I, I edit it and, and make a thing, but the, the starting, a big important thing for me was that I, there's a film called Chicken Ranch, but there's the filmmaker, there's two. There's the kind of the father, a little bit of direct documentary, which is Frederick Wiseman. And he just looks and he'll look at like mental institutions or a city or just, he's just looking, no commentary, no story. And it's mm. in some ways, I really love it in the sense that we really get to see things, but mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like watching security camera footage. And the only mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. contextualization is the title. Which I think is great, and I love it. But at the same time, even for me, it's or maybe especially for me, I, I, it's very difficult to watch. I have to come up with so much focus. And, and in today's world, where we in in this hyperactive state and a constant state of distraction, it's quasi impossible for a general audience. Or you know, I do want this to be popular, and, and it's so hard yeah. to 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 just sit down and watch it. And so, Chicken Ranch. It's with Nick Broomfield, and that was before he came around with a very iconic way of going about it and speak. He he is operating the audio, and he's in the film, and it gives a kind of context. I feel like I'm following a friend, and he's there, and but this film Nick Broomfield did called Chicken Ranch about prostitutes. The first time I watched it, there's no commentary. Then I got a copy with the director's commentary, and he starts telling what he experienced and. The first time, it was very hard for me to stay awake. But with him talking about his experience, I was so glued. Mm. I was like, wow, I want to know more. Like, why Why did you not like this person? What In our current state of things, you know, I think, I don't know, for you, there's this tendency, we don't like to, quote unquote, gossip or talk about other people, especially our friends. But at the same time, we all think it. We all love to talk about well, yeah, other me and you. people. I, I think we all do, yeah. <laughs> We talk about ourselves, but I, I don't know. My experience is a lot of people like to talk about people so that they don't have to talk about themselves. Like a lot of times I, I'm like with this like group of people, they're like always oh, talking about other people. And I'm like, I don't care about like these pe other people. I can talk to them, but we are here together. So why don't you tell me about yourself? That's how I always feel with people. That, that, and then that was the thing. I don't know how you experienced it, but. On, my film with Andre, but then Andre, it was impossible for me to get him to talk about himself. <clears throat> and that, well, yeah. well, okay. First of all, I don't want to criticize him or any of the characters in the movie. So I'm uh, very hesitant to you can... make comments about what he said. No, I don't want to, because to me, the film was not about what they said, you know? Um, I, uh, I really admire like people who's willing to just stand in front of the camera because being an actor, I know how fucking hard that is to be 
in front of the camera, expose yourself in front of a camera or on stage. And all the people you captured, I saw the openness and I believed what they said, you know, they felt genuine, they seemed genuine. But one, one thing I thought while watching your movie, these characters are so language driven. They are constantly speaking, but this, and of course they, they, they should speak, but like, cause you know, they've been asked questions, but their speech is very, it's, I don't see them kind of like looking in or like uh, the process of like searching for the words so much. It's like very like a well-fabricated language. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like composed already. And you said, what did you say? You said you, it was hard for you, you. It was hard for you to get him speak about himself, right? So that made me think, you know, that kind of linked to what I had, you know, the impression I had when I was watching. It's kind of like, which we always do, we, we all do, but language as a protection, you know, mm. language, you know, it's like, we, we talk about all these like, fancy things, philosophy, all of that, but it's, and we, we get very talkative discussing about, you know, philosophical ideas and politics and all that. But like, sometimes it's very hard when you're asked a very simple question, like, what do you, how do you feel about your mother? Or, you know, do you like me? Or did you miss me? Or it's very easy to answer those questions in casual way. But when it comes to like real family, genuinely asking these questions, all of the sudden you have to, it feels like be naked, you know, that kind of, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the conversation that we avoid. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in general. Okay. I'm not, cause I don't know Andre enough. And I didn't understand enough of what he said to really <laughs> criticize him or what he said, but he did talk a lot and it was hard for me to kind of like, like relate to him or maybe it's just lack of my language skill, but I, I lost him a bit, you know, many times in his speech. I think when people do use the language to expose something re really vulnerable, like an honest, almost like a real confession. I think it does catch people's attention and it does resonate in a very specific way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I mean, I had a lot of frustrations too, but it's, I like it because it's, it's still provoking and it's, it's, it's less about the individual sometimes and just reflections of different personalities that we can all encompass in the society. But mm. there's a, I will try to find the reference of it to, uh, and put it in, in maybe the video overlay. There's a guy, I forget his name, but he's one of the guys that, pre that was predicting or coming up with the idea of the JFK assassination. Mm -hmm. And there was two guys, I have to find them, I have to dig it up. Another title for Andre or his own monologue, if that was another film or like just this film about it, I will call this the making of a millennial fascist <laughs> because it's the, it's the foundations. It's, oh, there's another Walter Benjamin quote, something about, fuck, what is it? Behind every fascism, there is a failed revolution. And so what these guys, a lot of times, mm. and like you said, like the, the components and the creation of their ideology is prefabricated. Like everything that mm -hmm. he was saying, and there's nothing wrong with that. We can, we all have to take things and, and, you know, take, yeah. take it in and put it out. But a lot of the, what he was saying yeah. was very little of what he was going through. And I, I was, I wanted to know what he was going through. I wanted him to talk about himself mm -hmm. and his thing, but yeah. so much of it was just regurgitation and repetition of some class he took of some workshop of some revolutionary idea that mm -hmm. it's even have its background and examples of failures of fascism you know you, you're taking any of the concept and because i had i had the time and the luxury to to edit and watch all the stuff he was saying and i, I could sit here with my computer and google and look at the stuff and a lot of the stuff was like 
not to say they're right and wrong. It's just that there's actually so deep and so much discussion about it. But he kind of just throws it at you, and then it's not about the topic either. It's about there's the the thing behind which it shows like, okay, I I position myself with something to say, but then like you said, it's distracting yourself from his own actual thing, and that's why he was also saying he felt so vulnerable to just talk about his poetry, like that was more mm. vulnerable and more、uh, he felt more naked than people watching him have sex. And that's kind of revealing. And this is not even to say that's wrong or whatever. I get it. Everybody has their own sensitivity, but I find that really frustrating. And then you know, revolution and fascism—it's a really fascinating topic. And like, I really see it going on a lot now. We are going through such a time with so much system. We're going through so much evident systemic failures are happening right now. And I do admire and give it to these guys. In the sense that each one of these characters, for themselves, are trying to make a courageous step in what they're doing in their life. So, for example, Fabian and Andre, you know, like they've been talking about co-creating co-communities and wanting to do their thing. They are courageous in that sense, and I really respect them for that. That they are going against the system quite a bit. They are not none of these people, me included. We are not part of any. You know, we don't have a job, we don't have a thing, and we we're doing this thing that's quite rebellious, and and you know whatever I disagree with Andre or whatever, it, but I still I, I get I see that you know it it is dangerous what we're doing in the sense of like we're not just going with the grain, and you know it's all a bit weird. But I'm also very dubious with sometimes when when we say whatever stuff, but it's important I still think to try to have that. Courageousness and, and and propose something or you know it, it's it's not easy because then like you said like be in front of the camera now you put your stuff out there and anybody can come criticize you even if you're not、mm. ready even if you don't want that I stand by them and this is what kind of got into a bit of a problem between us because Andre got quite sensitive and whatever we have we're not really talking so much I mean this is a pattern that I have with other men like all these white men starts to ghost me they cannot deal with what I'm saying or what I'm not even think it's the problem what I'm saying I'm saying like、mm. let's talk publicly let's stand like、mm. I could be wrong you could be wrong or let's have a public disagreement but we just kind of avoid all of that so you said failed revolution yeah which was quoted by the Walter, Walter Benjamin, Benjamin. So, but this revolution in this case is, is I don't see, I don't understand what kind of revolution is it like a spiritual Precisely. revolution? Precisely, this is the the other big problem because a lot of this group of people, <sighs> not that they exactly represent, but I think it's an emergence and all, of our generation and all, of this region that、yeah. people take on ideas and ideologies as if it's something new, but it's not. It's like, are、mm. you like at least the hippies? Kind of had their own thing, and now nowadays it's the same way we listen to music. You listen to a bit of punk rock, you listen to a bit of you know techno, you listen to a bit of grunge or whatever, but you don't. You're not the embodiment of that, and you don't have your own philosophy. And you just take a little bit of that, and you don't even go as far as talking about、mm. revolutionaries. You just you know every day, and with your dress, you can have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you don't embody anything, and th that's fine. But it's just. What revolution? There is no. It's like we're pretending to be free love hippies, but also not. You just want to do your own thing, and so when we don't even have the revolution, it's like. I mean, I'm just reading the、um, capitalist、mm. realism from Mark Fisher these days, and so it's. And, and there's another guy before that that's like, the future is cancelled. Okay, and all we have, we're we're, we're all a bit.、Uh, it's like in the movie Memento. We cannot create new、mm. memories. All we, all you have is this idea, and this is from a mentor that somebody killed your wife, and it's not. You don't even know if someone killed your wife. It's just this lost memory you had somewhere, and then you have to go and get revenge. But you can't create new memories, so you can't actually <laughs> actualize all that. In in a way, that's just the way humans are, right? Like we have this long lineage, supposedly. Uh, and if you go with a Buddhist perspective, like you have all these reincarnations and stuff, but you don't have the ability to access the full memory of everything. Just some、mm -hmm. idea that maybe somebody said something and did something, and、uh, is it true? I, I don't know.
And and so these people mm. also have this kind of state where we there's a lot of borrowed ideas. But I think the trap and the pain is that we are so stuck in our own self, in our own individualism. And this, I think, is my big, biggest critic self criticism is as in as, as in uh, the film and the group of us, or this idea, right? That we're looking, we're all on this hedonic wheel. We're just the the only truth and value is that there is this drive for our own self pleasure, which contrasts against the problem that that alienates you from your community, and that's why the biggest fetish. For these group of people, it's not about sex. We got the sex, right? We got the self pleasure. You can wank, you can have fuck, you can do whatever. But the biggest fetish is community. That's what they're all talking、mm. about: eco co creating community. But at the same time, we all feel that we can't get to it. It's like the part where Yo- where Charlotte is teaching yoga on her laptop to these people in San Francisco, and this idea. So yoga community, <laughs> but she's. It's like. It's as community as me and you. We're getting as intimate as me and you. It, and people, you watching this, you're just watching this. On it's just in your head, and 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 you think that you're getting physical, spiritual, communal shit. But are you? And, and the, you know, and the, there is no community. And we're just going from it's this hedonic wheel. You're just going from pleasure to next pleasure to next pleasure, and you're never satisfied, and you're stuck in yourself, in your thing. And that's my criticism. About this whole thing, because we're all just, you know, we we don't have the the the, the actual feeling, <laughs> and we're stuck. You're so charged about this. I think it's the double coffee that I had. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, but this is this is it just the coffee? It's like it's very what? It's not just the coffee.、Oh. You have so much feelings for these people. Yeah, it's, it's very strong. Maybe, I mean, it's not. I mean, okay, I, I spent the summer with. I mean, him, but it, it, is it because you you were physically engaged with these people? Yeah, very much. I mean, they're good friends and over long periods of time. But not just these people, but the larger extended community of these people. I, I'm I'm also very much involved with them, and I hear their struggles a lot. And then it's yeah. Look, I don't want to talk about the pandemic. Because there's other problems with that、yeah. YouTube and whatever thing. We we we've all been through it, so <laughs> it doesn't need to be discussed. But it, it, of course, but you can't escape it, you know. And and there's a、mm. lot of this discussion <laughs> of the community thing, and and I've been speaking a lot about this with the people here. That in Asia, I don't hear people talking about the desire to. We gotta build a community, Junshin. You know who the fuck in Asia do you hear talking about that? If anything, it's like, oh my god, I can't fucking stand my family. I can't stand this circle. I, oh my god. But you have to.、So、in、true. the surface, you're like, oh yes, yes, yes. And deep desire, you're like,、mm. I'm gonna just fucking. I don't know. Like I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and here, all day, all day on on the verbal side, and in the desire side, it's like, I want to make community, but. Deep down, and all their life is about. I'm gonna have my own. I'm gonna go to the countryside. I'm gonna have my own time. I need me time, and that's what they do, and that's fine. But it's this contrast, right?、Mm, interesting. I need a lot of time to process all these things you said to me. <laughs> yeah, talk about them. <laughs> and then there's the Q and A, which. I mean, I don't know these people, so I wish I knew them better. Well, that was the hope, I think, with the movie. That I think it's more like, you know, there's a, there's a Chinese. I feel like I got to know them a little bit. Yeah, like that's what I think I was hoping to achieve. Like there's、yeah. a filmmaker Jia Zhangke, which I don't personally like, but a lot of Europeans、mm. love this guy, and he's always、mm. big in Cannes and everything. And as an Asian person, I don't really like it for long discussions and reasons. Mm. Ulrich Seidel, who makes films that reveals a lot about Austrian societies, Ulrich Seidel is not exactly popular in Europe, or a lot of Europeans that I know don't enjoy watching it. I love it, and、mm-hmm. I have a feeling that this film is not going to be popular or within the people here. They don't like to see them; it's too close. It's like a mirror. But、mm. so far, people that are outside of this, they love it. You know. People、mm-hmm. in Africa have like I want to see this, right?、Mm-hmm. Or even Eastern、mm-hmm. Europeans. I mean, that's also confusing、yeah. because there's also, you know, what's really funny. So two people in the film are Romanians, and they're they're very、mm-hmm. stressed about me with this film as、mm-hmm. I made it.、Oh. But so far, I've been getting a lot of excitement from people from Romania, actually. 
And when I tell them, I was like, I want to, when I tell the people from the film, Andre and Raul, I said, I want to take this film to, to Romania. I would love to show this in Romania. They got really stressed. But I think, I don't know. I, I, I it's not up to me to say. No, I, I watched it and I, 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 I do uh, find it very liberating. And it is fresh to me, even though I don't live a typical kind of, I enjoy sex. I talk about sex. I, I don't have, I don't think I have much guilt around sex. I've gotten over it when I had to deal with the society being gay. And, you know, it's like, I was like, oh, is this wrong? Is this wrong? But when I said, like, fuck you, like, uh, how dare you criticize me? That's when I overcame, I think, a lot of this, like, an oppression, uh, that shame and guilt, you know, around. I, I kind of... I think gay 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 people have less of that. That's a Bigger. that's such a good point that you you made on about the the the, the action of having this mm. act. The, fuck you. Like yeah, I I'm not gonna meet your expectations. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to like. And the other side is this liberty. And so it's oh, it's when you said that, like I had some criticisms, not just in the Q and A, but in general about me and my life before that. People say, "Oh my god." Ayoto, you're such an angry person. You're so aggressive. But I would say mm. that because, let's say, I, I see the same thing with you, where you're like, you've gone through the, the, the act of just saying, go fuck yourself and this anger, but I'm actually so calm. And I see the people that don't do that. They are angry, but they, they, they have to cover it so much. And they're just polite, civil, and, and nice. But there's this like deep down fucking rage that is not released. Whereas I think, you know, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. said, like we get quite animated, but actually I'm very calm and happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, with you, I don't feel like we, uh, like, I agree with you. It's, I don't need to get into it because we've talked about this. We are very similar. <laughs> we've talked about this. We are very similar. It's, it's like me always talking shit about my life, how it sucks to live like this. But deep down, I have, I secretly have like a lot of pleasure. <laughs> A lot of like the happiness and pleasure is comes with all the complaining and talking shit. You yeah. Know? But going back to the film, okay. So 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 that that's that's me. So for me, uh, I'm looking at the film and I'm like, okay, so th this is liberating. This is fresh, and they're kind of, you know, like like uh, Fabian. He made comments about. So he calls them gender people, and I'm, you know, these people who um, blames him for being cisgender male. And then he was like, he he, he was kind of like complaining about it. And to me, so I don't know him enough, but when a cisgender, like a straight male, powerful, handsome male type, when they complain things like that it's whether ignorance like they're not familiar with the argument they don't understand why they're being attacked or it's kind of like courage like moral courage like it's easier for them to say oh yeah you're right you know i have privilege i'm sorry I, a lot of like people in new york are like that i think <laughs> It's it's kind of courageous if you're aware of all the the discussions and arguments and still stood up and said, "Fuck you!" Like you know, I I I have I know I have privilege and I know like I'm an asshole, blah blah blah. But you don't understand how scared I am when I stand up and go talk to a woman and rejection kills me. Blah, like I appreciate honesty and courage. <laughs> So, like when Fabian <laughs> spoke, I was like listening to him. And I was like, okay, maybe he's being very generous. And good for him for speaking up was what I was thinking. Did you, uh, that's why I put. Um, I thought it was also really funny, like my very dramatic music. You know, the sadness. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and the camera switched to you, and I was like, okay, I know what Ayota's doing. <laughs> I was like, 
<laughs> every all the words starts to like uh, echo differently, yeah. resonate differently. I'm like, okay, so so that's why I said in the beginning this felt more like a like a story, like a, a drama film instead of a documentary, which which I like because this like uh, you talked about the documentary in which the camera is like the security camera this like um absolute objectivity you know it's like i don't have a personality i don't have any thoughts or opinion i'm just observing i think that kind of documentary movie is kind of like journal journalism could be like journal i don't know if i don't know if you agree yeah but i i, I think it's kind of like a journalism attitude uh, you know way, way of making film <laughs> but this kind of journalism is outdated yes. i think nowadays in journalism you have to expose who you are you have to expose your where you stand and from which perspective you're watching this and what is what is the opinion or what is what is it that you're trying to convey through showing these footages mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. otherwise this like an absolute objectivity is that it's it's kind of like showing universality you know like this is the truth the whole truth the absolute truth even god would agree with me that kind of attitude is outdated because it just never works like that it for me that kind of journalism is actually one would realize that you're nothing more than a part of the corporate fascism mm. because let's say you know, who's paying you and what positions are you in it, it goes back yeah, yeah, to like, yeah. you know, probably you're just a part of, you're, you're just a goon for Murdoch, right? You're just part of News Corp or you're just part of New York fucking Times. And behind yeah. there is just, you're nothing more but the corporate PR. You are nothing more than just continuing the fascism of these corporates and pretend. In this, in disguise of like having yes. the absolute neutrality. You know, there is no neutrality. There is no, bi there's, there's no bias. And if you disagree with me, you're biased. If yeah. you disagree with me, you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. If you disagree with me, you're a hypocrite. It's like, so, it's like Disney. And it's like, it's like I am God. Even yes. God would agree with me, you know? And that's, that's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's Stalinism, but 2.0, better than Stalin. Like the, the corporate fascism is more Stalinist than the Stalin. And they, they, it's like Disney with the movie Wally, -E, right? We, we're criticizing capitalism, but at the same time, we're going to sell you the complete capitalistic thing and just say, well, we tried. We can't be the capitalistic evil God when we're telling you that it's bad. But by the way, buy this. <laughs> by the way, continue. By the way, get back to work. By the way, continue to ruin the, the environment and whatever. And this for me is the evil of quote unquote neutral journalism. I fucking hate this American life. I said, <laughs> you heard this fear first. <laughs> I hate this American life, the podcast. I think it's completely fascistic and they're bunch, bunch of, uh, uh psychotic <clears throat> pretending to be, 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 whatever, you know, good old life. Because the thing is, you know, I, I listened to this one episode they talked about and it's really, I'm not saying that there's an exact answer, but we, we're going to work through it. But so there was one story about a woman. She's a journalist working for This American Life. And she did this story where she went to investigate at the border. OK, U.S. Mexican border about people trying to get over the wall or trying to get through immigration. And there was a story where there was a guy who I think, excuse my ignorance, maybe he's coming from Guatemala. Who the fuck knows? I'm really ignorant about this, but from another country. And then he went through Mexico to try and get asylum in the U.S. OK, and he told her he told her he gave her the story of what he just went through in the last week, something like the, 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 the fucking mafia. They kidnapped his children or some other shit. Like basically you can kind of insert and replace this fucked up story. There's so many of them. But the mafia demanded ransom money that he doesn't really have. OK, but he has a cousin or some aunt in Jersey or some shit basically gave the story to the journalist okay now the problem that i have mm. is that the journalist has to maintain this kind of professional objectivity okay the the mm -hmm. kind of objectivity laid out by this american life which is you don't you don't you don't interact with them really you just 
come and exploit and get their story so that we can give the story onto this American life and people in America can go, oh my God, oh my God, the humanity. Wow, there's people suffering. But then, meanwhile, let's, let's, let's go back to the advertising, okay? Buy this product, buy this fucking cereal, buy this fucking thing. Let's just, and then, so, okay, let's continue with the story. So the guy, after he told her, basically sold his story of his pain and suffering, but the story's ongoing. And then he's like, shit, I, I have to give money to the ransom because otherwise they're going to kill my daughter. And then he doesn't have data to call the mm. ransom people. And so he asked her, where can I use your phone? And the woman says, well, I, I'm not allowed to. My boss says, I'm not allowed to help you. I, in fact, and he's like, well, fuck, I need, can you fucking help me? Like, can you tell me where the payphone is or how do I get this bus? And she's like, I'm not even allowed to do any of this. I'm supposed to just go now. And then in the end, she helped the guy. She told him where the, the fucking phone is and gave him some like 50 bucks or something, you know? And then the boss was really upset at this American life, right? And I'm just like, this is such typical typical shit of this american life and the whole shit that like old age journalism of like npr as much as i love aspects of it but a lot of it is like the pseudo niceness because you know what's the what's the fucking ugly and the fascism and the, the violence is that by default you have as america as the nato northern alliance you've already colonized the world by doing nothing you continue to perpetuate the violence in Middle East. You continue to vi you perpetuate your position. Whereas people, uh, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm going to say that or, or Fabian or something like that. These people at least have the courage to say, I'm an asshole, but I like it here. Whereas I find these, the violence of the liberal neoliberals is that we're going to pretend that we're not fucking everybody over. But everybody stay in their place. This goes back to what happened during COVID times and all the ha bailouts. I'm personally pissed off because I don't get, <laughs> because I'm not really part of the traditional system in the sense, and, and because I'm in, in different countries, I don't get a bailout. I didn't get any of the checks. And what I noticed was like during COVID, it's like a Formula One race, right? When you have a Formula One race, you have an accident. When there's an accident and there's the car that comes out and everyone, everyone has to stay in the position. The person who's leading stay in, le in first position. The person who's last stay in last. And we have to pretend that this race is going. The race of capitalism, right? So if you made a fuck ton of money last year, we're going to give you the same fuck ton of money because you deserve it. Because you... Oh my God. And then if you're poor, you don't get so much money because you deserve to be poor. But it's a, it's a fucking bailout. And then meanwhile, we can't imagine, oh, because we're not going to go into communism. It's, you know, it's, as Mark Fisher said, it, it, it's more difficult to imagine the end of the world than it's to imagine the end of capitalism. It, it, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that's what I, I, I'm so off tangent I'm, here. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm, I, I think I see like, I, I see like a, 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 a huge, like a coffee figure with like a face and like two arms. <laughs> Just like a Mr. Coffee. <laughs> Mr. Coffee. <laughs> I timed the coffee well for this talk today. It's like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're fucked up because of caffeine, but I mean, I guess I, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I notice the coffee. -y now, blood. finally. <laughs> but we, someone else also said after the Q&A says, Ayoto has, has a very good skill of never answering the question. To that, I have the rebuttal. I am answering, oh. I am answering the bloody question. You're just not keeping up with enough co caffeine, you know? Like, I'm very much <laughs> addressing the question, or maybe I'm not. Yeah, I don't know what, what, I don't know what that, that person was referring to. You, you answer questions. Right? So what do you think of the Q&A? No, hold on, hold on, uh. hold on. You're moving forward too fast. I want to talk about these like uh, media thing, you know, like uh, when you said you were saying like buy this, you know, buy that. Also, like if you, the media is very pro military. Yes. Like, first of all, they, 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 okay, there's a bombing in such and such and such, and it's these barbarians are doing such and such and such, and all these like people crying people getting angry people being people people are like upset and these people are fighting and they focus on p 
people as if people are voluntarily <laughs> rising to fight with e against each other. They, they create the story, different people, because of the difference, hating each other, angry at, the, at each other to the point where they have to start killing each other. You know, it's this Hollywood movie story Tribalism. that they're telling. And, and to make this story convincing, what they do is they use real people <laughs> with yeah. real footages, you know. They're using real materials in order to tell a fabricated story. Because if they really want to confront war, I don't know why they don't do this. When a bomb or a missile is hits hits a building or kills civilians, why don't we hear the name of the manufacturer of these bombs or missiles? Why don't they say these bomb these bombs were made by this company, sold by this company, bought by these people, this amount of money was spent and it was funded by your tax money. Why don't they say that? They never say, they never say, they never mention the people who's making profit from these battles. And they say, oh, these people are angry because of the, the difference of beliefs. They, they have different religion. Okay, going back to the first seat of your movie. Yeah. Your characters, I, I, I thought your characters were being honest, even if you, you say, you know, or we discussed that some of them were not really willing to fully expose and instead talked about fancy stuff. Is this, that's how I said it. But, but I, 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 I felt honesty and I felt courage for every person in your film it, it's just such a generous it's such a generous act to you know to stand in front of people and speak about yourself or speak about what you think even if it's like already like prefabricated oh and then the fresh part you know things things were kind of like still fresh i mean i i think i know a similar type of group of people similar mindset in in la i i kind of like met these kind of people they were like they very pro-sex i i think it's really nice to see people having conversations like oh like how many times did you come last night how many times did you come today and how how often do you feel aroused oh, all the time like that whole conversation i think is very powerful and i think it, it's it, you think about these people i still think it's very positively powerful fully effective what do you think yeah i mean i agree <laughs> I, I think it's you agree yeah, okay. yeah, i mean yeah that's right? and then i think where, where it became a problem for me was like I, I totally stand behind it. I I am okay. one of them in a way, kind of. Right. Mm, mm, and mm, mm, mm. in a way, am I here as a propaganda machine with the same people? Like I'm not exactly an outsider journalist. I, I live the same lifestyle. I speak the same way, kind of, mm, to an extent. Mm, mm, mm. And I do okay. want to spread this, ex like expose more people to people speaking mm. and behaving like this. And But the mm. the funny part is when I confront the duplicity of some of these characters, mm. like there's another side where they also don't want to, Andre said something to me before the film. He mm. says, I, I was really like, Hey, I really believe what we're saying. I believe what you're saying. I believe mm. in what you're doing. I mean, I have criticisms, mm. but I don't have shame around it. I want to promote you mm. actually. Mm. And he would say, and I've heard this before where people, he says, I don't want to invite people who don't agree with me or I don't want to show them mm -hmm. anything. I don't want to give them anything. Mm -hmm. And there is this kind of conservatism. I don't know if there's like a certain kind of conservatism with libertarianism of like, if you're with me or you're mm -hmm. against me, like if you're not into it, fuck off, I don't want to even have a conversation with you. And for me, I feel like 
in the world, there is not enough space for us all to just be on your own island. And that was my comment and criticism when, you know, poetically, Fabian was skating. And he, a lot of times, he, very German, I would say, what is German, but a lot of exposure I had with people here is like, they, they want to do their own thing. I'm independent. Like a lot of people here go on trips alone or like when I go to the lake, there will be like this one German guy alone of every kind of age doing their own thing. And I'm not saying other people in other countries don't do their own thing, but here it's quite exceptional. Like I know a lot of people that go on holidays alone. You know, th there's a saying like, you have the freedom to go and masturbate alone in your room and starve to death. That is your freedom. That's the only freedom. Mm. The rest, mm. this is where I find the naivety of Europe, especially of Germany. I want to speak about Germany as a general geopolitical discussion that Germany, for example, has the geographic power and position to dictate a lot of the European Union decisions. And then other mm. countries like Greece or other, you know, out people who fall outside often get frustrated. For example, the, you know, like Greece's situation with the collapsing economy, you know, Germany's like, their main thing was like, Greece, please go and die quietly in your own corner. Don't, you know, we're going to continue to make policies that's advantageous to us. And I get that. Mm. But then they have this whole like European Union. We're together. We're not together. We're not. Th I mean, I, it would be nice if we are more together. But, you know, America or Europe make certain decisions that is comfortable <laughs> for them. But you rely on others. And that's what I said about Fabian. He's, he likes to be alone, but is he really alone? You know, you're alone in the sense of you want people around, but you don't want them to bother you, right? And that's why he says, I need time now to go alone and skate. But then he's, he's never like more than 10 meters away. You know, I know where he is all the time. Mm. And, and that's fine. But the, this kind of idea of independence uh, and, and freedom to do what? Like freedom to and freedom from. Like these are very... Uh, large discussions, mm. you know, like because mm. a lot of people, mm. let's say in other more uh, disadvantageous parts of the world, they don't have the freedom to do things. You know, yeah. you 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 just have to do what what is given to you. Mm. Whereas here, you can do that because you have the ability to, and that's the privilege, and that's the lack of understanding. You know, and that mm. this is coming even back to like what Fabian is saying. You know, does he? Does he lack the, the kind of understanding? You know, is it coming from ignorance, or is it co courage to still say what he's saying? But I think, at the same time, I I do, I do think that it's nice to look at it, because mm. I think it's it is easy to just uh, shrug him off and say he's ignorant. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an asshole. But at the same time, mm. I do see a lot of times where let's just use some very it's, I love it because it's dense. It's not easy. And I, I, that is very important for me because you can't just say cis man, evil, dumb, like cis. What is cis? And, and, and on the subject of cis, whatever this is that I had <laughs> conversations with many quote unquote, um, what he calls gender people or people, intellectuals or bougie people that discusses these things and they want to be even use pro correct pronouns. No, I get that. But at the same time, okay, we look at Fabi, he's a cis man. He's actually kissed and fucked and sucked more penises than a lot of these intellectual non-cis people. You know what I mean? Like, he looks cis or whatever, That, but that's your projection of you want to make things label and so you can attack these people. And for me, this is so mm. often the case of, like, the, the intellectual class where, you know, you, you know, in the metropolis, right, you actually are funded by the same evils, right? If you mm. have a job at a corporate uh, journalistic, uh, whatever, corporate setup, you are more guilty in some ways, right? Than Fabian, perhaps. What is, I mean, we're not trying to have a co mm. competition of guilt, but you own shares, <laughs> right? To certain companies or you, you buy, you know, you have your job, right? You have your job working in some generic company, okay? That company is held up by this entire system of NATO, of uh, Boeing or of uh, mm. what is all these companies that's making the fucking missiles, right? And it's mm. bombing all of these people. But you're just wanting to enjoy the benefits 
of safety that is brought to you by these large we we are guilty you know like i i think back to my interview yeah. with um uh yoshiko this uh japanese mm. feminist artist mm. and she had a very beautiful criticism and talking about the world war ii of japan mm. and how we have to, as women we will also have to we're guilty we're complicit like the women of the nationalists of the japanese uh, uh country that were very much like mm. creating babies. It was the same with the Nazis, right? They were promoting, mm. you know, we're creating soldiers. Mm. We are part of the industrial mm. military complex, mm. but it's very mm. easy to shift the blame and say men are to blame. You know, toxic masculinity, mm. that's it. Yeah. But yeah. we as women, as yeah. feminists, we are also, we are not weak. We are also people that are participating in this. Where Where mm. is that? And that's the self-criticism mm. of like, when I, mm, you know, mm. and, and this is when I, you know, Andre talks about this too. It's just like, okay, I'm vegan. Uh, I have the fucking mm. avocado shit. But where is that coming from? Mm. So I don't know. It's complicated. But, but, but at the same time, I find it odd and weird when Andre is also refusing to share his point of view unless you're already indoctrinated. It's almost like he's an insecure fascist that wants to build his little empire and won't have critical discussions around the subject unless people only absolutely mm. subscribe to his perspective and belief and so he won't actually have a public mm, presentation or discussion about his beliefs because he fears criticism and i think that goes back to you know also him with the can't talk about his poetry publicly and mm. you know the fear of that and i get a little bit behind it but i think that's that is i i, I yeah i think we should be more courageous like that makes me understand a little better of what you said earlier behind every fascism there's failed revolution mm -hmm. fascism so he's like he wants he wants when he so you think correct me if i'm wrong you think when people say let's make a community they don't mean a community like a democratic community in which everybody's like had entitled to speak their words, but it's like once you enter this community, like I set the rule and everybody has to agree. And that's like the violence of um, of corporates, right? You go, you have a mm, boss, mm, mm. right? And yeah. we like to believe that we're in a nice society, and and the boss doesn't mm -hmm. say Junshin, you have to work this much you have to produce mm. 20 t-shirts today he mm. says hey mm. junshin don't you think it would be better if you produce a bit more and you would say yeah, yeah, well yeah. fuck how much do i need to produce 10 or 20. he says <laughs> no i mean the minimum is five but look at the other guy he's producing 25. don't you think you want to do more yeah. and he never tells you to to actually do and and you're in this and it forces you it does not allow you to realize that there is yeah, yeah, yeah. this oppression that is going on because you can't yeah. talk because i'm not forcing you oh. you have to so it's like internal authoritarianism without the visible exactly authority and we're all doing this mm. and and a lot of this comes by default it happens when for example andre refuses to uh, open up to have discussions with different people or if anybody says anything then it's like you're out you're out yeah um, and that's what i experienced so maybe you you should you should ask you, he wouldn't answer if you confront him about that no i've had the same problem some with people, thomas with some, andre some, with andrea some people some people have very agreeable personality and those people tend to you know not be able to take disagreements or confrontation right well I, they'd rather agree than i mean i would say that these people are quite disagreeable which i actually oh, respect yeah? wow. but the, it's the disagreeableness mm. goes to the point where we can't even they only deal with this is for me this is juvenile this is immaturity mm. because yeah. you refuse to and this goes up, up to the level of 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 um tribalism right you cannot mm -hmm. live with people you disagree with and for me to mm -hmm. have a functional okay. society in today there there's very little conceptual space left for us to you know mm. everybody just like okay you either agree with me or you fuck off 
But how 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 this you know the the, the Hegelian truth model is that you need to have mm. you know it's like three blind people touching an elephant and each person try to explain what the fuck the elephant is. Not one of them is right, but the three of them gets you a bit closer. And and if we mm -hmm, don't mm -hmm. have this fucking conversation, we're all sitting there in our own blindness. Exactly. We we only look at the world partially and seeing at uh, looking at the world partially is very different from actually looking at the world, right? Because you might be looking at a, an apple, but let's say one part of apple was like uh, got really dry and dry like a wood chip, and then you might just look at that and think the whole thing isn't wood. Wood. When 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 ten people when they all touch and discuss it, I think this is a wood. <laughs> Nine people say this is a apple. Then we we might come a little closer to the truth. I mean, I'm curious but, about you. The the prob the danger that you and I have is maybe too much of a similarity that we have in terms of our worldview construct mm -hmm. in the foundation. But my my mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. of a lot of problems that I'm having with some people, particularly here in Europe, is mm -hmm. the contrast or like the the facing between a monotheistic versus a pluralistic worldview. Well, is it? Monotheistic. What is it? What is it? What is so it? a lot of it's it's like oh. Judaism, Christianity, uh, Islam. Uh, one God. One God. Uh. It's a mono mono culture, mono system. Whereas uh. we have a shared understanding from also the Buddhist mm. or there's like a poly, pol pluralistic yeah. system where many different things yeah. can function together and look at stuff and these people yes. i have a lot of times the awesome. frustrating thing and i don't care if you're into muhammad or abraham or jesus or whoever it's at the end of the day it's a mono system and for me i don't have a problem with you prefer blue and i'm red it's more like that you have this one thing i ha it, it hits me to my core of like anger because so much of my life uh, I, I've had different. I've had both models in my life growing up, but for me, more and more, this singular. I had a big, violent uh, separation with a fr another friend. He's he's also Catholic, Italian, mm. and you know he was racist, but he cannot see his own racism. And we watched this mm. one film, this Korean film. I forgot the name. Uh, I'll have to bring it up. It's a uh, it, it won award at Khan like two thousand and okay seventeen or something. And this movie is a detective story about some guy. He's a detective, and somebody in a, he was brought in because somebody was murdered in the village, and he's a detective. And through the whole uh -huh. movie, you're investigating. You're seeing through. You're seeing the situation through the perspective of this detective, and there's a murder case. But theoretically, as a detective, you're supposed to be the one knowing, right? You are the one in power. But we see it through his eyes, and we see that he's a bit of a loser. He's confused. He's not good at his job. And there's and we see the clue through his eyes, and it comes here and there. And this for me is the kind of experience that we have. Like there are people that you're. Let's say you are in the quote unquote developed world. Let's say you are a white person, and you, in theory you're supposed to be the developed country. You're supposed to be the intellectual. You're supposed to be the civilized. But then there's these problems, right? The murder problem, the murder mystery, the collapse of environment, the inability to make an economical model that functions, and you're brought in, and you say. United Nations or World Bank, IMF, please solve our problems. And you go, I, I don't know how. There's the pandemic, there's world wars, and it's like, he, the, in the movie, the guy couldn't solve it. And there's all these different things, and like, they brought in like this voodoo guy, they brought in like all these things, and, and the movie ends with a complete, like, very unsatisfying, like, you don't know who the fucking murderer was. And the funny thing was, I had a big conversation with this Catholic friend of mine, and he was very stubborn. He says, no, obviously, the guilty person was this person. I was like, what are you talking about? The movie was oh. to say, we don't know. But he, in his mind, it was very clear. This person is guilty. There's a good and there's an evil. And I was like, no, there is no, we don't know. And for me, this is the hubris of the monotheistic system that we want to believe. And this goes back to like evil, good, good, evil. But it's so fucking 
naive and my patience, this is where I get so animated because my patience for this, we, I think as a system, as a society, as a world, you know, unless we want, we're ready for a nuclear fucking catastrophe again, you know, we can't keep up this model of understanding. It's naive, it's stupid, it's outdated, and there's a fucking ticking time bomb, right? We can't keep going. So, we are good, they are evil. Out with them. And everybody thinks this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just can't so what work. You're say when you're saying, when you talk about good and evil, you, you do think there is such thing no. as good and such no. evil. No, no, absolutely not. Okay. My view is, I think there is good and evil, but there's no absolute good and no absolute evil. That we like, we can't categorize human, like uh, draw a line between humans and say these are the good people and these are the bad people. I think that's impossible. I mean, of course, there's the word of use, and, and I forget which German philosopher was maybe Hegel again, but like this idea: there's good, bad, and evil. And for for like some mm. 17th century whatever fuckers in Europe, like mm. good. Mm. is the aristocrats people who mm. provide for the people right your mm. kings and queens mm. and the, the the your lords that owns you that's good whatever they they're, do whatever they're, they're, they're into is good bad is who is the peasants and whatever other instincts that wow. goes against that evil that's crazy is uh, a conceptual evil that is like biblical shit right but but good uh, and bad is just what the lords do and what the peasants do and so oh, but we, crazy. we have in the West, I think, have inherited this model of thinking. And so every even my mom has my parents, my father has this kind of inherited Western ideology of what is good mm -hmm. and what is bad. And what is really fascinating is that let's say compare. Here's a really random topic. Facial hair. <laughs> mm. Facial mm. hair. If you notice, I mean. Say what you will about facial hair and what it means for a man, even a woman. You know, facial hair, there's other cultures that, that women have facial hair and it's, it's, it has a different meaning. Now, the recent understanding about shaving is it goes back to a modernization of militarism. It's about keeping mm. hygiene in a very mm -hmm. easy industrial mm -hmm. system. And so if you look mm -hmm. in Asia, most Asian countries m have been colonized and are peasants peasant mentality mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. asian men in most asia shave mm -hmm. right clean shaven mm -hmm. when i walk mm -hmm. like this in taiwan mm -hmm. people think i'm insane i'm like an evil <laughs> crazy mad person now look at mm -hmm. japan japan is a bit more complicated because it wasn't really colonized i mean japan mm -hmm. had to face the western industrial and I, I like these movies where and stories where you see people having to confront the western values right the industrial mm -hmm. invasion of the united states corporatism and there are people mm. in Japan that really fight against this. And so in Japan, mm -hmm. you'll notice that men, not just men, but the population in general, have a very different perspective and relationship to facial hair, a form of mm. act of uh, oh. illustration of freedom that other countries in Asia do not have. For example, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, even China has a more of this industrial um, modernization that does not have roots in the image of what and then, and then in the same time people love using these words natural what is natural what is natural about shaving your hair that is crazy you know it's doing this thing and you keep having to trim it according to your industrial kind of concept that you have to be in your place and serve your master whereas in japan where there is a there, there is a confrontation of this there are different characters and they have a different perspective to the idea, the act of the facial hair. Random conspiracy I have. I had I had no idea. But uh, I want to inform you that I will have to shave my facial hair to get this yoga. <laughs> I know. And also they asked me, do you have tattoos? And I said, no. I was like, why, do, why does it matter? Why can't tattoo people going on sale against constitution, I think. When I have the money, I will sue, I will make a lawsuit and legalize or make it illegal to re reject tattooed people to enter on sale.